Welcome back, Keith Tebow, FRC Media. Thank you for joining us as we continue to provide you news and information as we move through the summer. And, you know, soon schools will be starting up again. And we're starting to hear plans from uh, different school districts uh, around the Commonwealth. We've talked about what's going to be happening here with the public schools in the city of Fall River. But we'd like to uh, take a different tact and find out what's going to be happening at Diamond Regional Vocational Technical High School. I'm pleased to be joined now by the Assistant uh, Superintendent and Principal at Diamond, Andrew Rebello. Andrew, thank you for joining us again. Welcome back. How are you? I'm doing well, Keith. Thank you for having me back. Oh, well, my, our pleasure. Um, you know, we spoke earlier uh, in the spring about how Diamond handled the uh, the year after COVID struck, and, and, and Diamond did extremely well in uh, moving forward with remote learning. As we head until uh, into the uh, fall of 2020, how will uh, Diamond be handling the reopening of schools? Absolutely, and, it, and, and that's the most important question, right? How are we handing, handling education for our students, right? That's what everyone wants to know. Um, the biggest thing that we're guided by is the health and safety of our community. Um, in the spring, uh, because we had that targeted response to this crisis, we were able to reach 100% connectivity for our students on the first day of the closure. So we were able to continue with students learning which ultimately puts our kids um, at an advantage and in a better spot going into this year. Um, leveraging the best thinking of our reopening task force, uh, which met throughout the summer on what school should look like, um, and also leveraging the uh, survey data that we sent out to all of our stakeholders, uh, parents, students, and um, teachers, right? What worked for teachers, what worked best for students. Um, going into this year, we are gonna do a phased hybrid model. Um, because remote work, remote learning worked well for academics, um, academic week cycle for our students, they're going to work remotely from home. And then for vocational shops, we're going to bring them back in a hybrid manner. So our uh, vocational week cycles are two weeks long. We're going to split each group right in half. Um, they're going to do one week in person. And then that second week of vocational shops, they're going to work from home remotely and they'll flip flop. So we're hoping that the in person, uh, part of their vocation uh, really supplements and works concurrently while they're home uh, working remotely from their vocational shops. Because like, as you know, Keith, um, the in-person can never be replicated. And, um, you know, I credit our teachers for this past spring, our vocational teachers pivoting on a fly and, and being able to provide work uh, remote, remotely. But going into this year and having that in-person function it's going to help our kids tremendously and our teachers tremendously, um, because as this community knows, uh, we're charged with supplying the next generation of workforce for this community, and there cannot be any gaps with that. So um, we're, we're really looking at, uh, you know, in continuing on with uh, vocational in person in a phased hybrid manner. Um, let me ask you, was there any discussion at all in terms of having 100% um, in-person schools. I know in, in you know the four of the public schools, it was impossible just because of the size of the buildings and the number of students and getting that six feet uh, of distance in terms of social distancing. Was there any consideration at all that um, Diamond may have tried to go at it at 100%? Yeah, that's an important question, Keith, right? Because as educators, we miss our kids. We want to see our kids. We want to grow our kids. Uh, but the data needs to support it. And the health data really needs to um, supply, uh, you know, that uh, evidence to bring kids back fully. Um, so based on what the state shared with us, uh, the Department of Education and their guidelines with, uh, you know, six feet social distancing, bus transportation, um, based again on our survey data, on our uh, reopening task force, um, it worked best for us. And of course, working with medical professionals, um, it worked best for us to bring back in a phased hybrid manner. And again, we can, we're can we gonna continue looking at that data on a daily basis. And based on the trajectory of this virus, um, we'll be able to shift in either, either direction um, and pivot when needed. Uh, but yeah, of course, as educators, we wanna bring back fully in person, but the, the, the data right now, the guidance from the state, the medical professionals really need to supply that evidence before we can start talking about bringing back fully in person. Mm. How has the uh, response been from you know the teachers at the school as well as parents as you're communicating the plan with them? Um, I, I'm sure there are still some concerns from some, 
um, in terms of the the virus and 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 the spread. So I, I guess what was what was the reaction from your constituents there at Diamond? I think everyone understands where we are as a community right now and and how different education looks right now. Um, I think something that Diamond prides itself in is no matter the situation, providing a world class education. And our teachers have really stepped up. We've provided professional development. Um, we're actually pushing the start date back for the school year to September 16th. So from September 1st to September 15th, we're really going to provide intensive professional development um, to our teachers so they can be ready to deliver that world class education to students. Uh, but from the reaction from our community uh, has been nothing but supportive. Um, and I think everyone understands where we are right now. And we're really going to make the best of it, uh, just like we did in the spring, and treat this as an opportunity um, for, for educating our kids. How difficult was it as well in, in terms of devising the plan in that, you know, the four of the public schools, obviously, when you look at their, uh, their student base, um, large, larger city, uh, you know, larger number of students, thousands of, of students, Diamond, not so much, but a factor that Fall River doesn't have is that you've got students coming in from Somerset, Swansea, Westport, Fall River, I mean, surrounding communities. Um, was there a, a, an instance where, you know, you have to look at the, the COVID data, not just from Fall River in some respects, but also from your neighboring towns? It without a doubt does. Um, and the latest metric from the state is that color-coded metric system by town. Um, and the latest is Fall River being in the yellow um, and the other towns either unshaded or in the green. Um, and all that data proves to us is that we can return in a hybrid manner uh, if we do um, provide proper health and safety protocols and PPE equipment and masks, and we'll be ready to go on all that. But it's certainly um, looking at every single town individually and all of our kids individually and really taking all that data um, while consulting medical professionals um, about our return and about our plan um, and, and looking at it comprehensively. It's something we absolutely do. So what has been going on at the school um, since June, since classes ended uh, officially? I know you had a great uh, graduation um, in July, uh, celebrating the success of the class of 2020, but what's been happening in terms of physically the school, what has been happening at, at, at Diamond to make sure that uh, social distancing will be adhered to, cleanliness and, and other um, items of that sort at, at Diamond? Absolutely, Keith. So first off, uh, you did mention our, our graduating class, class of 2020, uh, just giving them a shout out. What an incredibly strong and resilient group uh, that set the way for uh, education in, in this COVID era. Uh, but we did convene a reopening task force that melt, met multiple times over the summer um, to devise some of exactly what you're saying. What does sanitation look like? What equipment and PPE do we need? Um, so we purchased multiple signage to display all over the school. Um, we purchased thousands of masks. Teachers and students will need to bring their own masks, but we'll certainly have some in case students show up without it. Um, as well as hand sanitizer, developing hand washing and hand hygiene protocols. Uh, and be, being ready to go on day one um, for students coming in. So uh, that's what the reopening task force did all summer, and, and it's, it's showed, uh, and it's shown in the uh, reopening plan um, with all of our, uh, you know, whether it's the food and how, you know, students will get lunches, um, all the way to the bus transportation and how they'll sit on the bus. We really tried breaking it down um, for the student experience, the ones that are coming in, what that really looks like. I think that showed well in our plan. You know, as, as we uh, move forward, you know, obviously when COVID hit in March and everything sort of came to a halt, um, I remember our conversation, uh, you had mentioned that, that Diamond was really prepared for it in terms of providing technology for students um, to make sure that they could succeed through the rest of the 2019, 2020 year. But a question I have moving forward is that now that we sort of, you know, you have a plan, um, you can pivot to fully remote again if, if need be. What about the added piece in terms of um, extracurricular activity? Um, we know the, the state has come down with some guidance in terms of athletics. Uh, what other plans does Diamond have to try to provide that holistic approach for students in terms of some activities that would normally, they would normally experience outside of the classroom? 
Yeah, Keith, you're absolutely right. Um, and I think Diamond tries to provide that whole experience for the student because it is beyond, you know, Diamond's education is beyond the four walls of a classroom or a shop. It's really expanding the student's um, knowledge and experience uh, with different activities. So that is really going to be guided by the state, what the MIAA says for sports, uh, what they say for extracurricular in that guidance. Um, because we push back to September 16th, sports won't start until September 16th or any extracurricular activities. So we have a little more time for that. And then we'll break it down by extracurricular activity, um, art club or theater. How can we follow the guidelines set by the state to make sure Again, our guiding principle, the health and safety of every single member of this community um, is going to guide us no matter what decision we make. Um, so again, we'll be informed by the state uh, regarding some of those extracurricular activities, uh, but without a doubt, we'll be breaking it down by specific activity and making sure that the health and safety of, of every single student and staff member uh, guides us. You know, um, as as more and more parents have been talking, uh, uh, you know, amongst themselves and and gauging uh, their own level of comfort in terms of returning to school, um, you know, I, I, a question I have for you is is a general question on enrollment. Um, obviously, Diamond is smaller than Durfee, smaller than some of the other schools um, in our region. Have you seen an uptick in interest in Diamond for this year? from parents who may be thinking, hey, listen, I'd like my student to get an in-person experience, but going to a large high school like Durfee may not be for me, and there may be opportunities that Diamond may have that Durfee may not. Sure, yeah, as, as far as the data goes, as far as enrollment and admissions, coming into this year, we've seen close to 700 applications um, from rising freshmen. Uh, for only 375 spots. So this community is really recognizing the difference that Diamond has uh, in our educational model. And staying on that for, the se uh, for a second, uh, the US News and World Report uh, provides data and provides awards to high schools on a yearly basis. And in 2020, in 2020, Diamond was ranked one of the best schools in the nation by US News and World Report. And you're hearing it first here, Keith. We're gonna do a reveal and the Herald News will be there in a couple of weeks. Uh, we'll have a nice banner um, with a logo and badge that was shared with us because in 2020, Diamond was one of the best schools in the nation ranked by US News and World Report. So um, providing a world-class education does not change in this COVID era. It doesn't stop, it continues. And um, I think that's the Diamond dif difference right there is, is continually pushing the envelope with no matter what circumstance we're in, no matter what location we're in. Um, and I think the community has recognized that. And that's why uh, enrollment really hasn't changed as far as uh, going into the COVID area here. Well, thank you very much, Andrew Rubello, Assistant Superintendent and Principal at uh, Diamond Regional Vocational Technical High School. Congratulations on the honor. We hope to hear more on that soon. And hopefully we'll get together and touch base maybe after school starts to see how the, uh, the transition has been going with students. Thank you again. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Keith. And I want to thank you for joining us here at FRC Media. I'm Keith Tebow.